So good morning, English 149. Uh, this is Grant, and this is your kind of first lecture-ish um, video. So what I'm going to do is try to introduce some concepts to you um, around remix sampling and adaptation. And, you know, I'm first and foremost a literary scholar, so I'm going to be introducing these concepts, at least at this time, in literary uh, standpoints, which, you know, I think a lot of these things, especially remix and sample, we oftentimes just think of uh, the way that they're handled musically. Um, but I'm going to at least try to show you how they are uh, utilized in uh, literary um, realms, okay? So a lot of my own research has to do with uh, looking at adaptations of uh, Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. So the reason why I find um, remix uh, sampling and adaptation so interesting is, uh, you know, this is from uh, Zizek, uh, who's a contemporary philosopher. And, you know, this quote here, um, one of the best ways to detect shifts in ideological constellation is to compare consecutive remakes of the same story, right? And and that makes sense. The story is, um, you know, is kind of the base story is a constant. So what you change and what you add or subtract often um, reflects upon the ideology of the culture that produces it. Right, so you can see um, how different adaptations or story cha changes over time, and how those changes reflect the culture. Um, so you know, like, so in terms of Robinson Crusoe, um, Lost in Space, um, Robinson Crusoe, this animated movie I think was called Wildlife in the U.S. Uh, Swiss Family Robinson. Um, the Martians, like a Robinson um, act, and uh, the K is also a uh, Robinsonian. So, like, you can look at the character of Friday, who's the native of the island. Uh, in one, he's an animal. In another, he's a ro sorry, he's a robot. Um, another is a piece of technology. So, you know, we can look at the way that a story changes through time. The other you know, the other way that we can think about stories are, um, you know, if you don't, if you come from a culture that doesn't have a lot of stories of your own and, um, you know, what you want to make stories. So, you know, uh, Spivak here is all about this post-colonial voice. Um, so, you know, how do we make room for voices that um, because of violence and publishing practices and society and culture, um, we weren't able to hear their voices. So we can hear some of their voices through um, adaptations, right? Um, so if you ever have heard of post-colonial fiction, a lot of the times it reimagines uh, a canonical work um, from the perspective of a different character. So Jane Eyre is a good example of it. Um, if you ever read Wide Sargasso Sea, uh, Wide Sargasso Sea is a um, like a post-colonial uh, remake of uh, Jane Eyre. Okay, and the other thing um, which is interesting about looking at adaptation and story is oftentimes they cross national um, and cultural lines, um, and so they're a way in which. Um, you know, we can look at uh, culture that exists, you know, transnationally, you know, across different um, nation states, across different um, spaces, right? We can, we can see how stories um, that change and move, uh, we can see culture um, separate from state. Um, so, a lot of times Frankenstein gets the, these kind of treatments. Um, okay, so what we're kind of starting to to look at here, and if you're unfamiliar with it, we're, we're looking at um, kind of this the study of meaning making, right? A work has two levels, uh, literal and concealed. 
So in a way, adaptation studies is interesting because we are looking literally at changes that are very obvious. Um, but then we're also thinking about, well, what do those changes mean for society? And the big question that I'm trying to ask, right, if uh, a text is reused, uh, remixed, or sampled, right, um, you know, where is the text? Is it located within the bounds of the book? Or is it located within society? Because if we um, make the meaning of the book by its relation of other books, right, the meaning of the work is not contained within the pages of the book, right? It's contained outside of that. So yeah, so we're kind of thinking about our text shaped by their authors or by the culture that consumes them, right? And so like certain things like you know, uh, a, a sample um, would be, you know, taking the the character of Friday, who's a native on the island, and making a Cary Grant movie that references it. So, like, what does that do, you know, to the text? What does it do when a native of an island is turned into a woman? Um, what kind of meaning can we we start to unpack there? Okay. So I'm going to use some defining terms from Linda Hutchin, um, who's a, you know, really good contemporary theorist of adaptation studies. So, you know, we oftentimes think of adaptation um, as biology, right? A process of change. But if you're not familiar, adaptation is an altered or amended version of a text, music, composition, uh, one adapted for filming, broadcasting, or producing on the stage from a novel or similar literary source, right? Um, so there has to be some sort of source material. And sometimes it's literary, and literary can be either books or spoken um, myths as well. And, you know, there's three criteria for uh, a work to be adapted, right? Um so it has to be transposed on another on another work. Um, so it has to there has to be some kind of change, right? Like so, this this first one is great, you know, um, for covers of music, right? It, and a cover is an adaptation. So your your you know what the song is, but their performance alters the song a little. So, and the second point is a creative and interpreted act of appropriation or salvaging. So this second point is a lot about sample, right? We're salvaging, we're taking a small part from another song and transposing it on another, uh, on a new song. Um, so that's, that's a creative act, right? We're taking small parts, we're not taking the whole song and we're mixing them together. And then the third is an extended intertextual engagement with the adapted work. Right. So we're not just sampling would be, you know, an intertextual element. Like if you see, um, you know, I don't know, like if you see a wand um, and you see the word Harry in another book. Right. You know, that's probably referencing um, Harry Potter. And so um, there's intertextual elements that can be just one image in a book that references another. And that can be a sampling but a remix you can think of is really invested in the whole song and you know rearranging it and engaging with the entirety of the song and not just sampling so i think these uh criteria for adaptation are a good way to kind of transpose on um remix um sampling and adaptation the last part I want to just introduce you to some other terms is bricolage. Uh, so uh, this is from Levi Strauss um, in the 60s, who was an anthropologist. Um, he uh, was thinking about, you know, how do we create things from what we already have? Um, so a lot of times, you know, we can create new music from what music we already have, or we can create new stories um from stories that we all have already heard. And so one, one kind of theory is just to say, like, everything's kind of just a remix and adaptation of something else. Uh, the last thing is um, 
you know, I want you just to start thinking about parody and satire because a lot of times parody only works if you know um, the genre or the text that it's making fun of. And so that is also a, a, a sort of adaptation and intertextual engagement. You know, we could think of a parody as a, as a remix of a text. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're, we're citing something to make fun of it. Um, the last thing is pastiche, um, which is, you know, parody is meant to say something and pastiche doesn't say anything. So, um, you know, like just reusing, I guess, a song and not really doing too much to it would be kind of a pastiche um, or a really bad cover, I guess, would be a pastiche. Um, so it's like you're you're reusing something, but you're not saying anything about it. So. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to end on that, um, that note, but you know, these are a lot of concepts here and this video is just meant to kind of get you thinking about, um, different ways to interpret remix sample adaptation across different kind of media forms. Um, and so we'll get into that more, uh, later this week. Have a good day. All right.